All right, I got my guitar. I want you to grab your headphones, put them on real quick, and we're going to do a blind A-B test. Listen to this. What do you think? They sound different? Let's listen one more time. Option one. Option A. Now, what if I told you that one of those sounds came from a cab within the helix and the other one didn't? Not a cab, not an IR. Hmm, let's get into it. Hey Worship Leader, welcome back to the channel. If we've never met, my name is Jimmy Cooper and I created Hey Worship Leader to be a resource. I help worship leaders think through how to pastor their people, lead their teams, and gear up for the weekend. And everything I do is filtered through one of those lenses. And today we're talking about gear and specifically how to get the best tone you can out of your Helix device. I'm gonna share with you a little secret I stumbled upon so you can try it out yourself. But before we do, I wanna give you something free that's also helpful. It's my brand new Helix Tone Secrets Guide. Whether you're just looking for inspiration or you're starting from ground zero, I want you to have something that can help you get great tone every time you play. We build a preset together and I walk you through it step by step. If you're interested in getting that free download, click the link in the description and you can download it immediately. So back to the question at the top of the video, what was the difference between A and B? And if I wasn't using a cab or an IR, what was making that amazing tone? I mean, they both sound pretty good in my opinion. Well, the quick answer is instead of using a cab block, I use the parametric EQ block. And if you're like, I had no idea you could substitute an EQ block for a cab, I would be like, yeah, you and me both. So now that you know the difference, let's listen one more time and see if you can tell which one is the cab and which one is the EQ block. And let me know down in the comments below. Option A. All right, while you're commenting down below your answer, let me just give credit where credit is due. I did not come up with this idea on my own. Actually, like I said, I stumbled on it on a website. If you watch one of my live streams lately, you might recall me saying I was gonna try to get a skin for my new Helix LT because it has some, uh, some scratches and scuffs on it. And I remember Chad Boston has a company called Gear by Siba where they make different uh, protectors and skins for different Helix products. You should definitely go check it out. But while I was surfing around, he has another website called uh, HX insiders website it has a bunch of helpful resources and I stumbled on a video by another guy named Chad Chad Husky I believe and he was demonstrating this technique that him and Chad Boston had talked or something and they they were talking about how right or wrong he was using an EQ block instead of a cab so that he could uh, dial in and out frequencies that he wanted to and it seemed to work pretty good so I was like oh, my mind was blown it's like I gotta try this And here are three quick benefits of at least trying this if you're wondering why in the world you would even want to do this. First of all, to save on DSP. If you're like me, HX Stomp user here, uh, we only have one DSP chip, and so DSP is a very valuable commodity. And from my understanding, the EQ block takes up less DSP than the cab block does. So any chance I get to save on DSP, I can take it. That way maybe I can run stereo delays and stereo reverbs. I might just be able to use a poly effect. Who knows? Number two, you can adjust it to fit your gear. Maybe you've been messing around with a stock cab and you just can't get the tone you want. At least now you have more things to play with. And number three, you can do what I've been doing the last two weeks as I've been playing live with this idea and I really love it. And that is actually, to, instead of replacing the cab with the EQ block, I pair them together. It sounds amazing. All right, so what I wanna do now is go over the parameters, show you how I set up the EQ block, show you some different settings of how to use it and show you my favorite. Let's do it. All right, so here we are on HX Edit in one of the three presets we're going to look at together. Uh, here is the parametric EQ settings that I have for the particular amp. I'm using a AC15 amp block. We'll have a couple different drive settings. Um, and the cab I'm pairing this with is right now on this preset, a two by 12 bluebell. And here are the settings. I'm using a 57, 57 dynamic mic. 
But uh, if you want to copy these settings down and try them on yours, I, I used a couple different amps and I noticed that I had to adjust the settings. So it's not like this will work with everything, but this is the one I landed on with my guitar through this amp that I thought sounded the best to my ears. So you can copy these down, but basically what it is, it's very similar to an effect that I heard John Cordy uh, talk about in one of his videos where he used the same principle, I think. He used a... Uh, a high shelf, low shelf, is that what it's called? Yeah, the high, low shelf, and what it did is bring in a bunch of more low end to make it feel like an amp in the room. And through headphones, it sounds pretty good, but running it through my uh, studio monitors, it really is beefy and sounds great. You may want that, you may not. Usually when you're trying to fit in a mix, you try to cut out some of that bass, but at least it's something to play with. So these are the settings, jot these down, copy them if you want to, and let me toggle between the two and you can hear them. Then I'm gonna go and see how they compare to a dual cab, stock dual cabs, and then the third preset will be uh, all of it together and see which one is your favorite. Here's the two by 12 Bluebell. <laughs> Let's add some overdrive and hear the difference. Here's the uh, here's the blue bell again. EQ. So what do you think? That's the first preset. Let's go to the second preset. Now this here is a dual cab versus the EQ block. The EQ block is the same exact settings, um, but this is how I usually set up my presets in the HX Stomp my, in my Expanse Pack. If you don't know about my Expanse Pack, you should look into it. Click the link in the description. It's an ever-growing collection of presets. It used to be just for the HX Stomp. Then I recently made it for the Stomp XL, and now I have it for the HX Effects and the Helix. So go check it out. So this dual cab is a two by 12 blue bell and also a two by 12 silver bell with different microphones. Um, and that's what this sounds like right here. Now the difference between the dual cab and the parametric EQ is that the dual cab kind of retains a uh, stereo effect. Even though the parametric EQ is a stereo effect, it still sounds like it's summing it to mono. Let's add some drive.
So to my ears, it sounds like the, um, and this is what the guy said in the other video, and I agree, that the cab, the stock cab, has a more polished sound, where the parametric EQ has more of like a an in-your-face gritty type sound. And so I kind of like both, which is why I wanted to go to the third preset, which is having them both stacked. So if you look here on the screen, I'm actually making a preset for my Expanse Pack. I'm trying to make the ultimate preset. But if you look here, I have the dual cab, just like we listened to, and then down here on um, path B, I have the parametric EQ, and then I use the little delay trick where we have like a 19 second, uh, no, 19 millisecond uh, delay block here to add just a little bit of extra width to it, and it sounds like this. So it kind of mixes that polished stock cab sound with the beefiness and the grittiness of the parametric EQ and it feels like it's just the best of both worlds. Did I mention this is the preset I've been using in church the last two weeks? I, I love it. I'm in love. The AC15, which is not an amp I've been going to that often, I really I really like it. And then with this parametric EQ thing, it just ugh, sounds amazing. <laughs> Let's clean it up a bit, add some chorus, a lot of chorus. All right, so what do you think? Is it crazy? Is it a stupid idea? Or does it give you more flexibility? Give you more tonal options? Let me know now in the comments what you think. Will you use it? Like I said, I've been using it the past two Sundays and I really like how it sounds live. Remember, click the link in the description to get the Helix Tone Secrets PDF free guide for you. Go download it. And if you are interested in the Expanse Pack, like I said, it's available for all the HX products now. Not Podgo yet. Maybe I'll get a Podgo. I'm thinking about it. I just don't like spending money, you know? I've spent enough money, as you can see. But a lot of you have been asking about like Podgo presets and so I'm really contemplating it. So if you want that, let me know down in the comments and I'll work on that too. Also. Also, I've been writing the script to my Helix for Worship course. Some of you may or may not know that I've had the idea to make a course centered around all of these 
Helix products. My inboxes are always full of people asking me questions and you know, scouring YouTube and sitting through ads can be difficult. So I wanted to make a all in one, it's one stop shop place to go where you could systematically and organize, work through exactly what you want to. Because if you're like me, uh, I learn a lot of things, but I also forget a lot of things. And so I wanna provide something that would be helpful for me as well as, as you. It's not available yet, so I don't really know why I'm telling you, other than the fact that if you want input to what goes in this course, I will put a link in the description to a free preset to get the free preset, you have to fill out a seven question, quick seven question survey. If you haven't done that yet, a lot of you have already done it a while ago. I think it was like even before summer started. I've been thinking about this for a while, I told you. But if you haven't, click the link, fill out the seven questions, get your free preset, and that'll help me know what to focus on as I'm building this course. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate all my subscribers. We are almost at 7,000. What is it now? 68.75 at the time of this recording. So, not too far away. What would help me is if you subscribe to this channel, if you get value out of it, like the video if you did, and comment. That helps feed the YouTube algorithm monster. And probably the biggest thing is just share the video. If you thought this was helpful and you thought it might be interesting to someone else, share the video. I'd really appreciate it. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.